Hey folks, and good morning from La Línea de la Concepción. It's also almost in Gibraltar, but not quite there. I've been spending a few days in the south of Spain, and Gibraltar's been a place I've been interested in visiting for a long time. So I made my way down here, and now I'm just right across the border. I'm gonna go spend one day there. We'll definitely see some of the sights along the way, but maybe we'll find some stuff that not everybody else finds when they go to Gibraltar too. So keep watching if any of that interests you, and then we'll see what we can do for one day in Gibraltar. When I searched for a place to stay in or around Gibraltar, the actual territory of Gibraltar didn't seem like the greatest place to stay as far as options and deals went, so I decided to stay at an AC hotel over here in La Línea. Turned out to be pretty nice, plus having Marriott Gold status helps you get a bit of an upgrade with a balcony like this, and then I got free parking. It costs like 55 euros a night, so it's still really cheap. There was nothing for that price range in Gibraltar. So staying on the Spanish side when you want to visit Gibraltar might also be the way to go. Walking along the avenue to Gibraltar was a nice and easy walk and it took me about 30 minutes. And as you get closer to Gibraltar walking in the avenue, the rock gets bigger and bigger. There's a really big Spanish harbor on the way too. There's just a little bit of walking left to go before I get to the border crossing. But I did notice that there's that parking lot that a lot of people will park their cars in. It's notoriously a hassle to enter Gibraltar with your car from Spain. Traffic to get into Gibraltar looks kind of like this. And I've definitely heard stories of people having to wait hours just to enter with their car, but entering by foot is usually quick. So now I feel pretty relieved that I made the choice to go walking from my hotel rather than driving into Gibraltar. Looks like this border crossing will be pretty straightforward, but let's see. That took less than one minute. Once you get across the border, there are a lot of taxis trying to get you to pay, I guess, too much to go up the rock. If you don't feel like walking the whole way, the bus is pretty cheap. A little less than two euros for one trip. Now as they're waiting for this, I get to walk across the airport or airfield as it's really called. It really is a unique experience to walk across an airport like this, but still. I would really recommend that you fly into a Spanish airport unless you're flying from like London or somewhere in the UK because there are a ton more flights to Malaga than there are to Gibraltar airport. Walking a bit further into Gibraltar, I already have the first sign of it being kind of a tax haven. And so far on the Spanish side is like 160 or 170 per liter, and here it's like 120. So if you really want to wait in that long line, you'll still be rewarded with lower gas prices, I guess. The first stops when you get into Gibraltar is Casemate Square, and then you keep going, and there's this shopping street. You can see all this British stuff everywhere, like this telephone booth behind me. There's also just tons of British shops, a little lower taxes. People might even come over from Spain to buy stuff like tobacco and alcohol. This is one of those British brands they have here. But let's start walking up the rock and see what else there is in Gibraltar. So earlier I was showing you those taxi drivers that'll take you up to the top of the rock, but you can actually just do it on your own walking, or there's also public transport going up there. And there's also this funicular car that goes up. But to be honest, all the options besides public transport and walking seem a little overpriced for me, so I just decided to walk up. Now I'm about halfway there and the view's pretty nice so far. You can see Spain over there, and over there Morocco, and of course Gibraltar is a uh, territory of the United Kingdom, so I'm in the United Kingdom at the moment. Walking around on the rock, there are all these old artillery batteries that are worth checking out. That gun's become a pretty cool water bottle holder. And since their historical purpose was to serve as a lookout point, they still offer great views today. One thing to keep in mind is that you'll have to pay about 18 pounds to get into the top area of the, the rock. But uh, that 18 pounds also gets you into St. Michael's Cave, so I guess there's no way around it really. One thing that Gibraltar is known for, perhaps the thing that it's most known for, is that it's got monkeys. I didn't see that one. These monkeys are Barbary macaques, and they're the only wild monkeys in Europe. But you probably won't come here just to see monkeys. I mean, Gibraltar is a super cultural melting pot. There's all different kinds of people living here. Even though there's only around, I think, 32,000. Also, as I was mentioning earlier, it's kind of a tax haven. I think there's over 60, I think over 61,000 businesses registered here. So more than one business per person. Oh my God. And these monkeys were uh, not doing something they're supposed to do in public. Oops. That little monkey's having a fit. I think I'm gonna keep going. Before hiking all the way up the rock though, there's a nice suspension bridge to stop at along the way. The views are definitely worth it. Kinda of windy day so you can really feel the bridge move. If you're scared of heights, then this bridge might not be for you. Got a little bit of a fear of heights sometimes, but right now it's going okay. 
you could always give it a chance and then turn around if not. But if you're really just not up for the bridge, there's actually another pathway on the side. And there's some more British artillery, artillery remnants here. I took the Mediterranean steps the rest of the way to the top and there are pretty crazy views all along the way. And there's a monkey in my way. So let's see if it'll let me pass. This here is the final stretch of stair up all the way to the top. But uh, the monkeys don't like to be confined as I've read. But this one didn't seem to mind me at all and kept on going down. And once I made it to the top, I found even more great views, along with a few tourist groups and some monkey mischief. You can see the license plates aren't the same as in Spain here either. It's GBZ for Gibraltar. Luckily, they didn't decide to drive on the left side of the road though. So if you are driving into Gibraltar, you can just keep going on the right. One question I've been asking myself all day is, why is there a cloud only over Gibraltar and it's blue everywhere else? And it's a terrible answer, but the only answer I can come up with so far is that it really is a part of Britain, because this reminds me of the weather in London. Included in your 18 pound ticket, there's also a free walk on this skywalk thing. And the skywalk is the perfect place to catch great views to the northeast going up the Costa del Sol. Yeah, that's kind of a good deal considering the one that I drove by in Canada. Bath cost like, I don't know, 55 Canadian dollars. Ah, I think it was even more. Or the one in the Grand Canyon Las Vegas is like 80 bucks or something. 18 pounds for this and a bunch of other stuff, all right. But please, 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 if you do go to Gibraltar, do not miss St. Michael's Cave. The cave is many thousands of years old. And the light show that they play on repeat is a great way to enjoy the cave without detracting from its long history. It's just a really unique experience that I think just about anyone would enjoy. If you pay to go up on the rock, definitely don't miss the cave. Finally, as I'm walking down and quite far from the top of the rock, the sun has started to come out. I won't be going back up. Oh well. In Gibraltar, there's technically the pound. It's the main currency, but you could get around here with euros for sure. But the fact of the matter is that you're actually going to pay with everything with a car most likely, so you can probably just stick to that. At least that's what I did. Since it got sunny, the walk down is, well, it's a little bit nicer than the walk up. It also might have to do with the fact that I didn't have to walk up to get down. But you know, it was definitely worth it going up there. These stunning views are just everywhere in Gibraltar, but at this point I'm getting really hungry, so let's go see what we can find to eat. Being a British overseas territory, afternoon tea is a thing here, but instead I'm doing afternoon café con leche. And of course, afternoon tea comes with crumpets and all that kind of stuff. And Gibraltar's got pretty solid fish and chips too, but do keep in mind that the food here is much more expensive than in Spain. Typical place to catch the sunset would be Europa Point, I believe it's called. But I was so hungry that I missed the sunset. There you can see it though. But that wraps up my day in Gibraltar. I hope this video gave you a few ideas about what you could do for a day in Gibraltar too. And if you found this video useful, then please make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more travel videos. Till next time.